To ensure that revenues and expenses are properly recorded under an accrual basis, accounting information systems use adjusting journal entries. Adjusting journal entries are entries made in the general journal to record revenues that have been earned but not recorded and expenses that have been incurred but not recorded. The process of recording and posting adjusting entries is the fourth step in the accounting cycle and occurs at the end of each accounting period after the trial balance is prepared. When a company receives cash before it provides the service, it has a deferred revenue. So that's kind of like in that um, Circle Films example where they got paid a deposit. When a company earns a revenue before it receives cash, it has an accrued revenue. And so that would be the case in that Circle Films example when they invoiced a customer. When a company pays for a resource before it uses or consumes it, the company has a deferred expense. This would be the case if we prepay rent or insurance. Companies often incur expenses and pay for them later. When this occurs, the company has accrued expense. So that would be the, the case of some sort of accounts payable. Suppose that a company sells 12-month subscriptions to its monthly magazine. On October 1st, the company receives a total of $1,200 for 20 subscriptions. This entry first increases the cash account by the amount received. And because the company now has an obligation to its customers to deliver the magazines, the entry also increases a liability account called unearned subscription revenue, or here it's just called unearned revenue. Thus, both assets and liabilities are increasing in this deferred revenue example. Assume now a CPA firm agrees to provide a service to a client for a $1,000 fee. The firm completes its work on September 23rd, bills the client on October 10th, and receives payment on October 21st. The CPA firm closes its own books on September 30th. Because the accrual basis requires that revenues be recorded in the period in which they are earned, the accounting firm must record that $1,000 of revenue on September 30th in this accrued revenue example, even though they don't actually bill them until October 10th. Now suppose that on March 1st, a company purchases a 12-month general liability insurance policy for $36,000. This transaction debits an asset, which is prepaid insurance, which will be used over the one-year period and credits the cash paid for the policy. Now on that same prepaid insurance example, let's suppose further that the company prepares financial statements at the end of March. As of March 31st, the company has been covered for one month and has therefore consumed one month of insurance, or $3,000, because that's $36,000, which is the total that they paid on the last slide, divided by 12 months. This deferred expense entry increases the insurance expense account by the amount that was consumed during the month and decreases the asset account prepaid insurance by that same amount. As a result, both assets and equity are decreasing. So continuing with this same example, let's look at the T accounts. Remember we talked about T accounts last time. For illustration purposes, assume that the cash account had a $100,000 balance prior to March 1st. So that's where this $100,000 is coming from. Therefore, after posting, the insurance, the insurance expense T account will show the $3,000 of insurance that was consumed with $33,000 
of insurance remaining in prepaid insurance because remember prepaid insurance is going to start with a debit balance of the 36,000 that we paid now we're going to credit off 3,000 which is going to leave us with that $33,000 of insurance remaining for the next 11 months $3,000 a month also the cash account shows a balance of 64,000 Notice that the cash account was not affected by that adjusting journal entry for the $3,000. So now let's look at accrued expenses. Suppose that a company's daily payroll is $1,000. The company pays its employees via direct deposit every Saturday for the work that employees have provided through Friday. Suppose further that the company prepares its financial statements on April 30th, which happens to be a Friday. Because the accrual basis requires that expenses be recorded in the period in which they are incurred, the company must record the $5,000 of expense on April 30th, even though they haven't paid it out yet. So now when the company does pay its employees, the entry of that payment decreases the cash amount for the $5,000 that was paid to employees and decreases the salaries payable account by the same $5,000. No expense is recorded because it was recorded in the prior period when the expense was incurred. So as a result, both assets and liabilities are decreasing. Adjusting journal entry generalizations include, number one, the purpose of adjusting entries is to record revenues that have been earned but not recorded and expenses that have been incurred but not recorded. Second, every adjusting journal entry will affect at least one revenue or one expense account. In addition, Every adjusting journal entry will affect at least one asset or liability account. This means that every adjusting entry will affect at least one account from the income statement and one account from the balance sheet. Adjusting journal entries arise because the timing of revenue and expense recognition differs from the exchange of cash. This is my third generalization. Therefore, cash will never be increased or decreased in an adjusting entry. So notice cash is mentioned in the scenario over here and it's mentioned in the entry after the end of the period but the adjusting entry never includes cash and it's also mentioned before the period but the adjusting entry does not include cash. <laughs>